Hi everybody. I've gotten over the months and maybe the last couple of years or so, many people have asked me what kind of magnets I'm using or what magnets are best to do this or to do that. I just thought I'd do a two-part video here. The first part being, so we're going to just show you what it is I have and that I work with. This is a metal stand that spins around in circles, as you can see. And this is used in stores for refrigerator magnets. People put you know, refrigerator magnets on it because they stick to the metal. Okay, so and these are, of course, leading tray refrigerator magnets. Okay, now, here we go. This is one that I, this is my favorite magnet of all. This is a one inch by one inch by a quarter of an inch N42 neodymium magnet with another quarter inch on top of cylindrical. These is what I found that I have been using to make magnets, move other magnets without any external power. We will get back to that some month here, hopefully soon. My life got very derailed here quite a few years ago now. And uh, so I never got back to doing it after I stripped apart and took apart my original uh, my original wheel that I had got going, actually got it going, put up on YouTube and YouTube tore down my account. I went up a new account, I put it up on that account and then it got torn down again. So I created Free Magnetic Energy 2 on YouTube. And so far that has not been torn down because I haven't done anything more with that account much. Um, Anyway, here nor there, um, and I promise you I will get back to it. Uh, here we got here um, is the uh, one and a half inch by one inch cross. Uh, the pole is on the, the top and the bottom. These are N42 magnets, cylindrical magnets, one inch across. And um, let's see here. And then here, this was an amazing project that I was working on that I'm so sorry that I stopped. This is going to be an upgrade on the Newman motor concept, which is actually not Newman. It's actually the Nikola Tesla. And uh, Mr. Tesla had originally created the electric motors, what we know today, and which is where uh, Joseph Newman was getting his Newman motor from. They never granted him a patent that I know of. Um, but I came up with a better concept to really take this to a whole new level. I made the first part of the video, the second part of the video, never finished the third part and it's gotten like two or three million views and everybody's wondering what happened to the third video i never made it uh, these here are cow magnets um uh, they're great just to have some fun with or, or just try to figure out and understand how magnetism works um otherwise they're not use useful for very much um and of course over here i have an army of these fun magnets now let me drop down here lower Okay, and down here, which I keep these away from all the other magnets, are my daddy magnets. These are four inches across, two inches, I mean, four inches long, two inches across, and a half inch deep, or thickness. Um, these magnets here, if they get too close to each other, they will crush or break your fingers. I mean, these are dangerous, dangerous, dangerous magnets. So if you're not used to handling powerful magnets, be sure you always have goggles on because if they hit each other they're going to do so with immense force then they explode they just shatter and they'll just the pieces will go into your eye and blind you for life these here i found just happened to be walking out of a hardware store and they had these a two pack for five bucks close out so i just bought them uh, very interesting i never know if i'll need them uh, they're used for welders to hold pieces of metal together until they get them welded uh, down here is a bunch of little odds and pieces. If you're new to magnetism and having fun, you can buy these magnets here, which break up in little tiny little pieces. And they're just fun to play with. And uh, it'll help you to grow your understanding of magnetism. Um, again, here's some more of these Mother Hudgers here. I have quite a few of them because I need them. And uh, I just love these things. They're just awesome. And here's another one right here, as you notice. They're not near any other magnet. <laughs> they're very much by themselves uh, because their magnetic field is very powerful out here. In fact, this here probably should be pushed down further. Mm. There we go. It makes it safer. And one last one sitting over here as well. Anyway, and one more down there. That's all four sides. Okay. So anyway, basically, this is my, my magnet tree, as you can see. Okay, and then over here on my desk, I have another piece of metal here that I stick more to it just to 
keep magnets on it for right now while I'm working on something. And this is my desk. As you can see here, actually there are, those are the parts for this project, up and coming project, that I'm looking for volunteers to help out with. Now remember, this is just strictly volunteerism. Some guy left a very rude and very irate message in the thread here below that initially made this announcement saying he doesn't want to be controlled, he wants to do what he wants to do, he doesn't like working with others, blah, blah, blah. Well, I deleted his comment, and I just want to let you all know, this is strictly volunteer, volunteerism. You all can do whatever you all want to do. But, just like any major corporations, whether it's NASA, IBM, whomever, uh, SpaceX, they have think tanks, and all people come together and try to resolve issues together as a whole. And the collaboration of everybody working together can get more done than we can individually. So that's my thinking here. So what's going on here, this initial first project, before we get into project number two, which gets back to working with just strictly and only magnets with magnets. Um, and I promise you, we will get back to that. Um, I also want to warn you again, at some point in time, you may come back here and find this account closed. So be sure any of us who take this matter seriously, email each other. I've already put my email in the thread below of the original posting of this. Uh, I guess I'll do so again with this thread, I mean this posting as well. Um, because if we lose contact with each other, and we do all this work, and this account gets closed, then most of all of us are pretty much back to square one. Okay, here or there. What's going to be here for this up-and-coming project? Not all the parts I need are here, and that is to make this a motor. Nothing, nothing, no breakthroughs, nothing fancy here. It's just an old-fashioned concept, and just based upon you know what Nikola Tesla discovered back in the, oh, I think around 1870s, early 1880s, I believe. Anyway, so to do this, what we're going to do here is we're going to wrap a coil of wire called magnet wire around and around. Around and around and around and around. So as we wrap this around and around and around, back and forth, back and forth, this becomes coil number one. Now, so the wire does not run off the edges on either side, we're going to use this here. I, I can give you all part numbers. There's a part number for that. You can freeze frame this. And this is going to go around this. And this will be hot glued there in such a way that it will stay here and one more ring here. Now this is two inches long. The mag that's going to go inside of here is only going to be one inch in length. So I'm going to put this ring and this ring one inch apart and leave a half inch and a half inch on each side open and free. Okay? Then we're going to for those of you who are going to volunteer to help out, going to build two more little tiny coils of wire, pickup coils, and uh, here's one of the rings, and a little bit of hot glue will connect that with that, and then take this and put it on top with more hot glue. And as you can see, that'll create a little area to, to create a coil of wire. Okay, also probably should put a little place here, a little slit there so the other end of the copper wire can exit and go out from the, underneath the coil of wire. Now, what's going to happen is that with each of these coils, we're going to put one in the front, insert it inside of here, because remember we have a half inch of space inside of this cylinder, and then on the back side of this, we have yet another half inch of space inside here to put a secondary coil. So what we're going to have here is three pickup coils that will generate electricity. Now remember, we're not doing anything that it doesn't already work. In fact, the general principle that I'm showing you here is how some 90% of all of the electricity consumed in the world is generated. So I'm working here slash we are working here with very sound principles. However, where we're going to have a twist, 
it's going to make this a little different from most other little generators, which basically what this is, is a micro generator. Usually a generator needs an outside power source, either water to, to turn the internal magnet in circles or wind um, or gasoline powered generator using gasoline and, and a gasoline powered motor to spin this magnet inside here, which is the electric generators that you buy in your local hardware stores. Okay. Where the twist comes in, so we can make this motor or generator drive its own self, is that where you see these red lines, this is where a fourth coil will be placed. This coil is going to be very narrow, only about a quarter of an inch wide, maybe a little wider, but I doubt it. So this coil is going to go this way, up and over the end. And then down this side and then of course over this again and then here so basically what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be wrapping the coil wire around this way around and around and around this way but only about the height of maybe an American nickel so that coil is going to be referred to as the drive coil that will drive or kick the magnet internally around in circles. Again, this principle that I'm sharing with you already works. It's, I'm not doing anything that has not already been established. Okay, so everything I've shared with you right now is well established and works just fine. Where the twist is, is that I don't know of anybody, at least not that I've seen so far, and what videos I have seen, they're not explaining everything, I don't even know if they're fake videos for that matter, is that we are going to be using a total of four coils. The other three coils will be put in series, not parallel series, just series, and they will, that energy that comes out of that, that's generated from the three coils, will all be directed to a fast charging capacitor. Now obviously this is way too small, but I don't have a large capacitor yet. So that energy will go, this, that this generates, will go into the fast charging capacitor. Now that fast charging capacitor then will be hooked up to this coil, this real narrow coil that goes around and around. Each time per each revolution, this coil will suddenly be energized. And in that moment that it's energized, it will kick the magnet inside around as long as the timing is set up correctly. A reed switch or a commentator will be used to time this so at the exact proper moment, this little tiny coil of wire here will be energized and the energy that comes to this little tiny coil will be gotten from these three much, much larger coils that, excuse me, this way, in a circle, circle this way, that will in turn be uh, pulling energy from this device. So if my thinking is correct, and so far it is, the question is, Will these three other coils generate more than enough electricity that will be more than ample to supply, continuously supply, a quick little charge to this other coil for like a tenth of a second or a hundredth of a second, whatever it is? And if so, then this should continue to run nonstop, endlessly, over and over and over again. If this indeed actually works. This is a monumental step. This is huge. Because now it's only a matter of taking the principle, which now is no longer theory, and scaling this up to the next size, where you create a better model, a little bit more oomph to it, where it'll generate, say, you know, at least one amp or two amps, and 120 volts, or maybe 15 amps and 120 volts. And you can run, you know, a hair dryer. That's about all you can run on it. 
at most because a hair dryer is 1500 watts. So that would mean this would have to be a 15 watt output. Anyway, if a bigger size works, well, of course it should work just fine because if the little one works, then it's just a matter of scaling it up. So after that, then building a big one, the size of a hot water tank, say a 55 or 85 gallon hot water tank, then you take that, you bring it into the home and you set it vertically next to the electrical box inside of the home. Now it should power the entire house. So again, this as logic has it, and it, in, in my thinking is correct, unless there's a fallacy to my thinking here. This should work. So my only concern I do have is that we're going to have an electrical field going this way. It's going to be energized for a brief moment, but then we've got another field of energy, which is a, 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 a it's going to put off uh, a flux. It's going to be a magnetic field here. It's going to be going this way. So will this one interfere with this other one to the point where it causes this to shut down and it just won't work correctly, causing it to lock up or something that's unforeseen? I have no idea. So that's the challenge I have here for whoever's willing to volunteer and get involved in this. Let's make at least one of these. And then um, if we can get one working, we are home free. Literally, home free. It's just a matter of making it bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how the gasoline combustion engine started. It was something real tiny and insignificant. And initially, nobody saw any use for it. And now look at today. Now we have 8 and 12 cylinder engines. And in ships, we have 36 and 48 cylinder engines. I don't even know if those engines still exist anymore. I know in submarines, they had like 36 pistons in, in a submarine. But anyway, think in terms of this is like piston one, if you will. I know it's not a piston because it doesn't have anything to do with compression. Here's two, and then three, and four, and five. So you can make quite a few of these, say um, 18 inches in diameter, and then have a whole bunch of these 18 inches working in tandem, and you probably could power quite a bit in the home with those. So anyway. Um, oh, and here's a little, little fun little guy I've been working with. This part comes out of a, a 1940s um, a gyroscope from a warplane that gave the altimeter of the, of the plane. And this here spun at high speed using compressed air. And this went onto the compass or altimeter instrument. And, of course, this is the parts. So, anyway, I didn't strip this down. This is what it came from. This is how I received it. But I put these magnets on each end here, um, just for the fun of it, something else I've been working on. And that allows us to, it'll easily move, as you can tell from, so anyway. All right, that's it. Um, once all the parts come in, I'll do an update on parts here. This is basically what's going on. I'll have individual pictures of this stuff with part numbers and what have you not. Remember, you all can use anything you all like. It makes no difference, just as so long as the, you come up with the same end achievement. And uh, hopefully, if everything goes well, this indeed will work. Again, remember, this is using sound principles that we know for a fact already work. We're just using them in such a way that is unorthodox and potentially has not been used in this manner. All right, that's it. That's all the news is set to print for now, and uh, thank you for listening, and uh, I never thought this group would ever get this big. I really didn't. Uh, we got over one and a quarter thousand people here. I think it's like 1,300 people here now. Anyway, um, everybody else, just do whatever it is you want to do, and we'll get to the second part of using magnets to power magnets here the next time around. Uh, again, I'm in the middle of some major life-changing events in my life, and it's huge. So what little time I have right now, I'm going to jump on this and see if we can get this running right away. I will update everybody as more parts come in. And of course, what's missing here is my magnet wire, not shown. All right, guys and gals, there's even a woman in here that's uh, got involved in this. And she seems like she uh, really might have a good head on her shoulder. So hopefully she can contribute as well. I don't know if there's other women here. There might be. I haven't kept close track of it. But uh, this is just my mind's eye. 
We're just having fun with magnets. But hopefully, this will be very productive. All right, everybody. I'm out of here. Take care. Bye-bye.